wood, cork, leather patches, acrylic. This is what I made with the Akmer P2 33 watt laser and I'm not going to lie, this thing is insanely satisfying. But here is the real reason you should watch this video before buying one. It's not about the power number on the box, it's about ventilation, positioning and also workflow. Because lasers are fun, but they can also be messy, smelly and in some cases even toxic. So today I'm finally covering the Akmer P2 33W together with the R20 enclosure with the active ventilation and I'll show you what it can do, what I love about it and what I don't love. And what you should also watch out if you are on the tight budget. And yes, there are three missing features that would make this thing almost perfect so I'll get to those too. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Quick context before we start. I received the Akmer P2 33W laser and R20 enclosure for testing. But this video is not sponsored and this is my honest unbiased review based on real use. I'm going to show you what worked, what didn't, what surprised me and what you should know before spending your money. This is not a deep engineering breakdown of a laser physics. This is a real world waker video based on actual use, real projects and real results, including wood cutting, photo engraving, core coasters, leather patches and also acrylic engraving. And I also talk about workflow limitations, because those matter way more than the specs sheet. Before we even touch unboxing, we need to talk about safety. This is a laser and it's not a toy. And ventilation is not optional. Wood smoke already smells and lingers, but acrylic and leather can release toxic fumes. So you absolutely need proper ventilation if you want to use materials like that. Yes, this laser came with R20 enclosure, but I still use it the way I use all lasers, outside. Because outside is my favorite air purifier, and it's easiest in the I like breathing strategy. Even with an enclosure, never run laser unattended, because when something goes wrong with a laser, it goes wrong really fast. Now the unboxing, my P2 arrived with a damaged box, which is not what you want to see with a machine like this. If your box arrives like this, don't just plug it in and pray. Check the frame, check the rails, check the wiring and make sure everything moves smoothly before powering it on. Luckily mine was fine and once it was out, it immediately felt like a serious machine. One of the biggest positives with the Akmer P2 is the build quality. The frame feels solid, the motion system is smooth and everything feels stable and properly engineered. And this matters because if a laser has a weak motion system, you get skipped lines, shifting or inconsistent engraving. That doesn't happen here. This laser does not skip lines, it doesn't randomly shift, it doesn't do that why is my design suddenly in a different dimension thing, it just works. The P2 also has a proper safety and control feature. There is a key switch and I love that because it means you can physically lock the machine out, especially if you have kids around. It also has an emergency stop button and with lasers, emergency stop is your best friend. If material shifts, if something starts burning too aggressively, if smoke builds up or you just see something that doesn't look right, you want to stop everything instantly. There is also flame sensor and alarm behavior which adds another layer of safety and yes there is also tilt in the device itself. But I repeat this again, never run laser unattended. This laser supports air assist and that makes a big difference for cutting. Air assist improves cut quality, reduces burning and keeps things cleaner. I crank the compressor and yes, mine shakes like it's trying to escape the room when it starts. It works, but it also is a reminder that once you add air assist, you're building a real setup, not just placing a gadget on the desk. The P2 also supports a rotary roller for engraving round objects, which opens up a lot of fun projects, 
but I'll keep this video focused on the projects I actually run. Now the enclosure, this is R20. It needs assembly and it has active ventilation. And honestly, this is a difference between the cool tool and the tool you can actively live with. Without proper ventilation, engraving turns your workspace into smoke, smell and regret. With the laser inside R20 enclosure, the whole experience becomes cleaner, much more controlled, you still need proper exhaust routing, but the enclosure makes it much easier to contain smoke and keep your workshop safe. It turns this from a garage only tool into something you can actually use like a normal person. Before I show you more results, I need to talk about workflow, because this is the part that matters more than the specs. Some lasers come with built-in screen. You copy a file to the machine, select it on the display and run the job directly from there. This one doesn't have a screen. Some higher-end models also come with a camera, and on a laser, camera is not a gimmick. On a 3D printer, a camera is mostly for time lapses and checking prints or spotting spaghetti monsters. On a laser, a camera is useful for the hardest part of the entire process and that is positioning. Placing your material perfectly on the bed, aligning the design exactly where you want it and not wasting piece of wood because you are 2 centimeters off. This is where the camera becomes a game changer. With the P2, positioning is more manual and you need to take your time for the precise job. So consider getting a camera. And then there is also connectivity. Ideally, I would love to connect the laser to my Wi-Fi and send or control jobs from my desktop, like a normal modern device, without needing a permanent USB connection. With the P2, you are basically relying on a direct computer connection workflow. To be fair, features like camera alignment and network workflows usually come with higher priced machines, or as add-ons in some cases. So I'm not pretending this is a deal breaker for everyone, but you should know this upfront. On the software size, I ran laser from my computer, and I did a photo engraving test with the Tiger image. This is one of my favorite tests because it shows detail, contrast and also consistency immediately. Watch it burn in line by line is addicted and the result on wood looks clean and sharp. And again, this is where the stable motion system really pays off. Another thing you should budget for is a honeycomb bed. Like most lasers, it doesn't come with this one. If you want seriously to cut materials cleanly, you will probably want a honeycomb, because it helps with airflow and reduces burning and also reflections. So don't think of this as a luxury, think of it as a part of the real cost of getting into laser cutting. Now for the fun part, real results. It cuts wood well and it graves cleanly. I engraved core coasters and these are a perfect quick project because they look instantly finished and gift ready. I also cut a bare design in a wood. And this is where the 33 watt power really shows. Cutting is where the weaker lasers struggle and you end up doing too many passes or just burning too much than you intended to do. Leather was also another highlight. I got patches in both round and square shape, engraved my log on them and this honestly looks like a professional product. It's one of those results that make you go, ok, this is not just a hobby toy, this can make real things. I also engraved my logo on the acrylic. And once it was cleaned, it looked amazing. But I'll say it once again, acrylic and leather are exactly where ventilation becomes non-negotiable. And I also love the included sample board that shows engraved shades at the different power levels because it helps you dial in the settings without guessing. I also tested the mobile app, the Akmer app. The laser can create its own access point, so you can connect your phone directly to it and send designs from your mobile phone. I'm not going to pretend that I'll be replacing PC workflow with a phone, because for serious work I want proper control. But for quick tests, simple engravings, it's a nice option. The Akmer P233W is extremely solidly built and it's consistent and produces clean results. No skipped lines, no shifting, no random weirdness. 
it cuts wood well, it works with cork, acrylic and leather, and yes, you can also work with the metal. The output looks genuinely impressive. The downside are the workflow features. No screen, no camera, no send it to Wi-Fi from your desktop experience. Plus, you should also budget for honeycomb bed if you want to get serious. But if you want a powerful laser that delivers results, you are okay with more manual workflow. Just remember one thing. Ventilation is not optional. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and consider subscribing for more smart home and maker content. I do weekly home assistant videos, but I also love mixing in a tools like this, because building cool stuff is what this channel is all about. And now I want to hear from you. What should I engrave next with this thing? Wood, acrylic, leather or something completely ridiculous? Drop a comment down below. Thanks for watching and I also want to say thanks to all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, shared, liked or commented on my videos. Thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. Or you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. Last but not least, you can always send me super thanks and I will be super thankful for that. I'll be seeing you next time and we will talk more about things that matter. Bye bye and have fun.